after the last season's heartbreaking end and is not winning the title of the J1 League, instead finishing second and Shimizu S Pulse winning it instead of us. Can we go that one step further and win the title? Now with Champions League football guaranteed, it'll be too much to juggle all these competitions. Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Austin Summer Hex and welcome back to another episode of Zero to Hero. Now before we get into the episode, I implore you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It does help the channel immensely and if you can comment a comment as well, it just boosts it in the algorithm and that's what we all want really and while you're at it why don't you join the discord it's in the description down below about the only positive thing coming out in competition wins is winning the manager of the year award for dominic bannon and with us now juggling champions league football as well as the j league as well as the two cup competitions available for the j league teams we had to get some more players in and maybe get rid of some of the dead ward so just before the season started we brought in Shota Meno on a free transfer. It comes in from Serizo Asaka. And Kenjiro Amori comes in as a new centre back. I've agreed, I had to agree him to be an important player. To be fair, his current ability said he was better, but you're probably going to be a squad player in all honesty. It comes in from Yokohama. Hirokazu Yamaguchi leaves to Kanazawa as per his loan deal. More people to join come the new season were Junpei Arima. Daikihara comes in as the replacement for Hajime Ando. John Hori comes in as another left back, right back. And Shigeru Ishimaru comes in as another left winger. I don't know why we just like signing left wingers, but hey, we just sign left wingers. Samiki so Kamashida comes in as our new. Guess what? Left winger. But he's mostly meant to be playing as DM. Comes in for £475,000 from Shonen Balmare. Where he didn't have a good season average with the rating rise. But he played a lot of times both in J3 and J2 over the past two seasons. I believe he can make the step up to J1. And Yuji Sano comes in as another... Winger, this time right winger, you can also play as a backup as a striker. Comes in as an important player, but he probably will be about a good start or squad player, in all honesty. Then the out, so high Kaneko has been sold. He was unhappy with his game time and he was loaned out last season to Fujieda in J3. And it shows how good a player he is with him being in the J1 team and being loaned out to the J3 team. Ketsumi Hiyashi has also been sold. He was a player that came in on a free transfer a couple of seasons ago from Totori. He was loaned out last year to Minabea Mitsumi and FC Osaka said, can we buy him for £145,000? And I was like, okay. I think we've got a really good deal for a player that just wasn't up to the standard required for a J1 side. Yumitsu Kamiyama has also been sold. Came in on a free transfer for Momoya last year. He only played one game and we've sold him for £78,000 to Oita in J1. Takashi Emoto, another player, has also been sold. He came to us in J3, played a few games in the J1 last season, but the average rating was not good enough, so we ended up loading him out and then selling him to Oita this season. Then someone we didn't want to let go, but we had to because he was unhappy. Is Amika Aguchi. We signed Junpei Arima to not his position because I play Aguchi on the left back position and the right back position. So it wasn't even his position, but when I said it weren't playing in your position or something along those lines, he got unhappy. So we just decided to sell him to Plateau United. Got £350,000 for him. Not that bad at all. Yoshitaka Amori was also sold. He was not wanted here. And Velja, who last season bought two of our players. Uh, I've signed a third in the space of like two transfer windows for them. And yeah, I think we've got a really good deal with him going there to them for £350,000. Tomohiro Suzuki, one of our younger players who came through at our youth academy when we were in J3. Um, Mariasu bought him for £240,000, rising to £275,000. It was actually 200 altogether at the start, 
but he's played one game so because of that one game we've got an extra forty thousand pounds i know he played a few times and he was kind of crucial to our registration but we've got a lot better players now coming in from the youth academy so yeah we just decided to sell him while we could and i think we got a really good deal and mario fc are probably yeah, they're probably going to get upset with that transfer in the end. And finally, Giratu Nishihata was also sold. He was another one of those young players. Comes in when we were in J2. Last year, he was loaned out to Tokyo United. He didn't do too badly in the season on loan there. But this season, Tokushima came in for him. A £350,000. I think that's an even better deal than the one for Suzuki, who went to Marias, obviously. So yeah, him going to Tokushima for £350,000. I just think it's just such a good deal. And how did we start the season? Well, we started off with the Super Cup, which is a competition I did not know even happened in Japan. We ended up losing on penalties to Shimizu. We, the only reason we were in this competition is because Shimizu last year did the double. They won both the Emperor's Cup as well as the J League. So as us finishing second in the J League, we get to play in the Super Cup as the away side. Yeah, it didn't make any much difference. Barrios got a goal, but Shimizu won on penalties. Uh, Wickenden, who was one of our younger players last season, is now really, really good, I admit. Like, four star. He's just so good. We lost it. So, still no trophy yet with Mushishino knock off J2 and J3. The start of the season, the rest of the start of the season, though, went well. We won the next four games against Nagoya, Sevizo, Osaka, Chiba, and Kashiwa. For, we went on a bit of a bad run. Shimizu we drew, FC Tokyo we lost, but then did get a win against Gamba Osaka before losing to Matsumoto and in the J-League second round, first leg, we lost to Shimizu. Really bad getting Shimizu last year's champions in the first round, but that's how the fixture schedule ran and of course we lost 2-1 because we could never beat them for some reason. We're in a really respectable third place. Shimizu so far I've got 20 points this season in 8 games, undefeated for them. Wata, one point behind them, also undefeated. And then it comes towards in 16 points, 8 games played, 5 wins, 1 draw, 2 losses in 3rd place. And if we go to season preview, which we, I don't think we showed last year, um, we last, at the end of last year and start last year, we were always expected to be finished in 20th, same as the last season beforehand. This season we've actually gone all the way up to 16, so mid-table only well. The rest of the second half of the first part of the season was even worse in terms of league form. After losing the Shimizu game, we ended up drawing Kashima before drawing in the second leg against Shimizu, which of course knocked us out of the J-League Cup in the second round. Kyoto, we lost 3-1. Nagano and Nagata, we did get wins. For losing to Kobe, drawing with Yamagata and losing to Yokohama. Being Oita and drawing with Urawa before beating Tokushima. Losing to Nagoya and drawing with Chiba. Then we went on a bit of a better run of form. Being Iwaki in the second round of the Emperor's Cup. The third round we beat Kashiwa. And then beat them again not long after in the league. Before then beating the Fukuoka in the fourth round of the Emperor's Cup. Then drawing with Shimizu, drawing with Iwata. Beating the FC Tokyo. Losing to Gamba Osaka, beating Sarazo Osaka in the quarterfinal of the Emperor's Cup, we ended up winning 2 1 against Amir before then drawing with Matsumoto. And currently, we're quite close to Champions League football, but in all honesty, nowhere near Shimizu or Uara Red Diamonds. I don't think we're going to win the league this year. If we do, it'll be such a backdoor approach to the season. But yeah, 44 points in 27 games ain't that bad considering we're still one of the worst teams in the league. We've actually got to going up to 12 because we've had transfers because we're on the 3rd of September. But so far, it's expected. We're not we're doing where we're expected to go, really. We're not expected to be anywhere near the top. We're expected to be nowhere near the relegation in terms of season preview now that halfway through the season. So mid-table or top half is a success, but I'm still going to be in for that Champions League football because it'll just help the side out so much in terms of revenue. In terms of the games in the Champions League, we've been drawing with we've been drawing with y Rim Yongsu from North Korea, Austin Hyundai from South Korea, who are 21-time champions, and if you go by the victories, they 
hardly lost any titles in since the start of the game basically and Western Symphony Wanderers who have actually won a Champions League though that was in 2014 but what about the transfers in summer will they help our side or will they hinder our side well let's have a look at them so first off the signings and we were quite busy first off we signed three free transfers Andreas Panagi comes in as our new centre back right back He's an English Cypriot international, so he's English but he also plays for Cyprus. Comes in from Added and Hark. He was previously at Oldham and Southampton. Carlo Peritali comes in as another left winger, except that this one's probably the best one we have, and that's why we signed them. Because I'm getting rid of the left wingers that just aren't good enough. So he comes in from Monterosi where he was recently just released, and so we signed him. Only about a month after his contract ended. Same with Panegi. And yeah, he did really well last season, so to say. So hopefully he can do just as well with us in J1. And so far, he's not done too bad, like. And Cyril Uluic comes in as another striker. Probably because Hara, who we signed earlier this season, was just not good enough. And we decided to cut ties with him straight away because he played that 20 games, it scored goal. Yeah, he was a really bad player. But Sol Lewick comes in as our new striker. He can also play him, so he can also play a midfielder and he may alter in his BTM. I don't know why, I just thought I would. Another player that chose Takeyuki Mizuno for £950,000. I don't know if this was a transfer record for Murchishina. I kind of forgot if it was or if we spent a million or so a bit beforehand. I don't think we have, you know. Um, but he comes in from Tokushima where... It was kind of a catalyst for them going from J3 to J2 to J1, all in the space of three seasons like we did. And he comes in as our new DM. Important player, I would have preferred squad player, but so far he's started four games and not done too badly. Two goals, one assist, one player of the match awards. 7.3 to average rating. Another player we signed is Issy Nagaoka. Comes in as another left winger. He's just a youngster. I've loaned him out to Sagan Toso where he was the person we signed him from earlier this season. Bit of a pricey deal, £650,000, but we kind of had the money, so we decided to buy him. Akio Ikigami, another player that comes in, right winger, comes in for £350,000 from Tokyo Verde. Hopefully, he'll be loaned out in a couple of seasons and will do really, really good. But 19 years old, I thought it's worth it. And the SAO Suzuki comes in as our backup goalkeeper for next season. Mainly because our other two, the third choice and the second choice, whose names have escaped me, and the second choice, who used to be our main choice in J3, are getting old and are on that wrong side of 30 now. Not 30 plus, but. So mid-30s or high 30 not like mid-30s or high 30s, but they're at the point where they will be downgrading it as a player, especially considering they're not playing. So Suzuki comes in to rectify that. Um, hopefully, if our players do stick around for next season, he'll just be loaned out next season. Hopefully, he'll get more game time. But he comes in from Nara. We had two really good seasons of the Japanese Football League or non-playable leagues in Japan. Uh, he's not done too badly this year uh, since our first season back in J3 but then he's also not done too badly so far in after joining us and going back on loan to Nara. Finally this wasn't even me this was the director of football. Makoto Hirata comes in as our new striker. I didn't even think I wanted a striker but I just saw him I saw that it was full striker and the he's gone down in aspirations from scout to coaching but i do think our coaches are worse than scouts so yeah but it comes in 7.5 thousand pound a week but one of the most pricey signings we've made but striker i think he can do a decent job now for the sales takuya shoyo was sold now i know past three seasons he was one of our best players but this season because of the left wingers we got he was not first choice and then the left wingers that were playing were just doing so good so we got unhappy. We said okay we'll try and sell you and Fukuoka and then pay £400,000 for him. Kevin Mango has also been sold. Now I wanted to sell him because well we signed a few more centre backs as well as having people that had come into the club that were foreign. So 
I don't think Cherub and Men I think Cherub and Menga was the best person to sell because we had a load of players in Cedar and yeah his average range weren't the best they only played seven times last season he only played seven times this season but we still got a profit from when we signed him from Hiroshima selling him to Sendai for £475,000 Shota Meino was sold now I didn't want to sell him but Kawasaki Frontale came in with a bid for about 600000 I said can you up it to 800000 they were like hell yeah uh, I think we've got a really good deal there. First player that came in on through transfer this season, only played nine games, scored two and got one assist, and one player of the match was. He didn't do too badly. But with more players coming in, that were probably better. Even though I wasn't trying to sell him, selling him was a good bet. And because we got the money and we hadn't got in the transfer, we got more money than we were expecting. So yeah, really good deal there. Shusaku Gucci was also loaned out, this time to Adelaide United. Now if he plays 5 games, he'll get £400,000 for a deal for him. Now I can officially say, later on in the episode, if I don't mention it, he does end up going to Adelaide United. Um, it's not going to be until halfway through the next season when the loan, loan ends. But getting £400,000 for him is not that bad. And then what we were trying to do from the moment the transfer window opened in summer is sell Daiki Hara. He played 12 games, mind you, 6 more off the bench, but he scored 0 goals. He did not look good enough. He got 1 pinch pinch off in the cup. Once again, not good enough. He came up to me actually saying he wanted more game time. I was like, okay, we'll sell you because you're just not good enough here. I didn't say that, but but it was basically what was in my mind. So Wata ended up paying two million pounds for him, and I think we've just got such a steal for them because he's nowhere worth two million quality. But saying he came in on a free transfer at the start of the season, and then halfway through the season in the same season with Van Sun for two million, it's not that bad. And that did make us able, because we knew that deal was happening, it did make us able to sign all these other players previously, who were uh, youngsters that, you know, might be over our budget normally, in terms of trying to keep financially stable. Selling £2 million Daikihara and then bringing in £2 million players or younger and better talents. I think that's a really good transfer business. And then after the transfer window you had ended, um, but before the transfer window in Denmark had ended, we sold Shungo Kishimoto, another player we didn't want to sell, though in, apparently the scouts rated him really badly uh, compared to what he was. To be fair, he had gone down for like three and a half star to three star. Um, but Sonski, I think that's how you pronounce it, I do not know. Um, I've signed him for one point. one million pounds. Now he came in on a free transfer so when we were in J3. Did really well first season, did even better in the second season in J2. Did just as good the season after in J1. Last season he was not that brilliant compared to the previous three seasons. And so this season he was only a fringe player and his average ratings were awful. And so to be honest I was wanting to sell him. Now that I think about it I just wasn't actively looking to sell him but 1.1 million for him is not that bad so once again we've sold four players now to Denmark after I've unloaded those leagues up so they really like a Japanese player but yeah there all our transfers and like I said we are now expected to finish 12 with those sales gone and those players joining hopefully we can push on like I said to get Champions League football the first game in the Champions League for Mr. Shino was a 4-1 victory in North Korea against Rim Yongsu 4-1, 3 goals by Hiji Mando. I decided to play the oldies, I decided to play Karatani, I decided to play Sasaki, I decided to play Ando, because they were the ones that got us from J3 to J2 to J1, and I've kind of neglected them ever since then. They're still at the club, and I want to keep them at the club for the rest of their careers, and so I've been playing them averagely, and people like Sasaki and Karatani have been doing decent jobs, and they're not so much, but scoring a hat trick in the first ever game in the Champions League for Mishishina United ain't that bad. It ain't that bad at all. And also, another player to say is Uchida, who I kind of neglect him a bit, but he joined us when we were in J3 as well. Halfway through that season, he's been a main regular for us, not as much this season, but these few seasons he's been, he's been a really good player as well. So, yeah, uh, another 
one of the oldies getting on Scorsese as well against Vimyongsu. But youth intake happened and we got some really good youth prospects coming in. Best one is probably this guy, Daihachi Shikano. AMC right winger, so he can't play MC because, well, I don't play MCs in this tactic. So he'll be trained to be a striker and he'll also be playing right winger for us. But hopefully he'll be really, really good. Another player is Suzumi Omori, another right back apparently. From Awaki, Ota is a left back. Daiki Ishidate, who is a centre back and he looks just as good in terms of potential as Shikano. Taigo Kutsukake is another centre back as well. And Yosuke Ito is another right winger, AMC. Except he's a natural at it, right winger, so yeah, that's good. All the rest, uh, just worst prospects. Probably going to be signing Kikuchi, probably going to be signing Matsumoto, and that'll be that. All the rest will be just let go. We're currently fourth place. We've played some more games, uh, mostly undefeated, or, or actually undefeated, I mean. Um, so now we're fourth place, 31 games, 54 points. To be fair, we're only five points off first place. I don't think we're going to get there. If we do, like I said, it would just be such a backdoor moment. But if we can get fourth or third and get Champions League football guaranteed, or even win in the Emperor's Cup semi-final against Kyoto and get to the final and win that, um, like, how good would that be? So in the Champions League, we ended up winning against Western Sydney Wanderers 4-0 at home before drawing against probably the best side of the group Olsen Hyundai 0-0 at home we ended up losing 4-3 in the semi-final Olympus Cup so we better get Champions League football through the league now and in the second game against Western Sydney Wanderers we actually beat them at away from home in Australia 3-2 so far we have five games remaining of the season three in the league two in Champions League and we've still not guaranteed ourselves Champions League football but if we win every single game remaining and teams like Kyoto, Avara, Iwata and Shimizu mess up we could, we could actually win the league it's just so crazy that we can also all of a sudden win the league and the funny thing is two of the three games is against Iwata who are second and Arara who are third so if we win those two games, that probably gets both of them at the title race. So it'll only be all the, either Shimizu or Kyoto, or just Shimizu or just Kyoto. If we somehow win this, it'll be so undeserved. We would not deserve it. First of those last five games was against Iwata, which we ended up winning through and goal by Iwata's Myojin. We then ended up being Urawa 2-1, really showing how good we were. I know we didn't get as many shots and we got more on target apparently in better XG but apparently the media said we were fortunate to beat them. I look at this, I don't think we were. And then in the FC Champions League Group J, we ended up beating Rumiongsu 7-0. So if we go to the Champions League, one game remaining, if we at least get a draw against Olsen, we will have qualified to the next round of the Champions League, which is crazy. But going into the final game on 3rd of December against Tokushima Vortis, who are currently a last place, already relegated. We also signed one of their players from them for £950,000. If we win that game and Kyoto either draw or lose, we'll be champions. And so, going into this game, I, I'm not thinking we're going to win. I really don't think we're going to win. I honestly believe that. I'll, well, I think we're going to win, but I can't see Kyoto messing up so badly that we just, just come out of nowhere and win the league, even though we don't deserve it. But just in case we do, I'm playing the oldies. I have played Kohai Karatani. He's now only two star, 31 years old. He's probably only a JFL player. No, he's J3 apparently. But he's been with us since before we even joined the club. So he's been with us for J3, J2, J1. He's not played as much these past few seasons, but he's done really, really good no matter what. Hitoshi Sasaki, another one of these oldies. 
He was one of my signings in second season with Mishishino United. Not as well the first season, but did really well every single season we made there. And even now he's getting above seven in the league. Which just goes to show how good a player he is. He is meant to be a J3 league player as well. So we're playing two J3 league players. And we're also playing Hajime Ando, who has hardly played all season. He's only scored two goals in, in 11 games. Technically, he scored nine goals in 30 games in the past two seasons after being and brilliantly the previous few seasons. He is meant to be a leading JFL player. So fourth tier of Japan. But if we, like, honestly, if we somehow win this and with these three players playing, I would just be overjoyed. Either just to annoy you a bit more or just to continue with the tension. I'll just quickly say that we managed to beat Olsen Hyundai 5-2 away from home in South Korea to qualify out of our group as champions where we are now playing Port who are the Thai team, um, top tier Thai. Doesn't say they've won anything knock off an FA Cup because the, this is the thing I have with FM is because they're not a loaded league or because you can't play as them, you then can't see who won the title, who won the cup, and so if, if you skim ahead 200 years, they'll stick with the same competitions they've won domestically at the start of the game, which I just don't agree with. I think they should allow you not to click on it, but to say, oh, well, this team won the Helix Revo Thai League in 2049. If it says that, I'd just be so much pleased with that. But... And I want to show you the goals, but I don't. I think this game. I think this episode is kind of running a lot on time. It's nearly 50 minutes recording, so I don't know how long the video will be. But we beat Tokushima 5 0 Gaston Barrios scored in the 49th minute. Oli Wickenden scored in the 57th. Carlo Privatali scored in 66. Kuroha Karatani scored in 72nd and Hajime Ando scored in the 87th minute and if you look at Sasaki he got player of the match award with a 9.4 These players even though they're nowhere meant to be near as good as anyone else in the league they're just so overpowered at least Sasaki on the right wing Hajime Ando gets in for his goals he's not as good as he used to be but it's still good and Karatan does a decent job whenever he plays as well. I think I just got so many good players. Well, was that enough to win the title? Well, if we go to the game for Kyoto, I'll just be showing you the stats. Can you guess what happened? It was against Nagano, mind you. So, if you go through dynasties and all that stuff, at the start of this game, I managed Nagano. At the start of the save, I managed Nagano. That's the second club after getting sacked by Kurisas and Chavche as Neil Brannan. We've now retired, since then, retired Neil Brannan after he went on to become one of the best managers ever. And now we're playing as his son, who manages also in Japan, but with Tokyo Mishishino. But Nagano did us a favour, he won one. Nil, which means we are champions of the J1 League. Like my God, we we just we honestly didn't deserve it. Like honestly, we don't deserve this. And that's probably gonna be the title and all that. But now that I've changed the title formats and all that stuff, but my God, we've won it. I was not expecting this. Like if we look at Tokyo Mishishina United, if we go to their competitions and domestic leagues, they, in real life, they're a JFL side. In 2030, they finally got promoted to J League football or J3 League football before getting relegated immediately. Then I went to J3, ended up getting promoted to J2 before coming back down. And we took over when they're in relegation in J3, finishing 11th. Then in J3 the next year, we finished fourth, getting knocked out in the playoffs. The third season with Mishishina, we won the league in J3 for winning it back to back again in J2 to get back to back promotions. In the first season, we ended up finishing fourth and just narrowly missed out on the Champions League football. Last year, we narrowly missed out on the title, and this year, we've won the title. Like, my god, how good is this tactic? And I'll, and I'll say it again, if you want to download the tactic, go down into the description below, there's a link 
to my Patreon. You don't have to subscribe or anything to it, but you should get a free download on just for any user and just download it, use it, join the Discord while you're out. There should be a link in the download thing for the Discord. So join the Discord, tell me how it's working with as your tactic with your save because this tactic's got me from just narrowly missing out on player football in the semi-final in the J3 to then getting promoted as champions in J3, promoted as champions in J2 and now champions of the J1 league as well as getting into the knockout rounds of the Champions League all in the space of what, six, seven seasons. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. I, I just can't get over it. I literally just finished the season early this morning and I just had to record it because I want to keep this excitement still going. I find it so hard not to be talking about what happened in the previous parts. But we won the league as Mishishino. But my word and i don't and i think if there's any more reason for you to like and subscribe to this channel you have to do it now you have to do it for mushishin you have to do it for hijimi and you have to do it for karatani you have to do it for sasaki like the video and subscribe to the channel hit the bell for mobile push notifications whatever you call it and while you're right come join the discord i've got i'm going it's a growing community uh the more people joining it'll be better community will be you can hear it all about when the video is uploaded you'll also hear that when my second channel video is uploaded so you can watch them as well if you so wish you'll also be able to talk about football manager or the video games all sports like football, all the sports like the Olympics that are currently happening as of calling this. But yeah, I think I just have to end it all. I'm going to be talking forever about how good Mr. Shuna was and how much of a surprise me. So yeah, like I said, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell as well for push notifications so you never miss an upload. Check out my second channel in the description below as well. It's called The Hex 001, at least that's the channel tag, and the actual name's Hex. Uh, it plays games like Europe Universal 4 and strategy games, grand strategy games, map strategy games, that sort of stuff. So if that interests you, click the link down in the description below, go to that channel, watch a video first, and then if you think it's good enough, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be trying to upload twice a week on that channel. Well, this will be like three or four times a week, but yeah. I've been Matthew, also known some Hex. I'll see you all next time. Hex, signing out. Bye, everybody. <laughs>